Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be learning how to use uh, the Context API in React for state management and we're going to be um, making this project here. Uh, it's just a, uh, a simple enough uh, shopping cart. If you click on add, bask add to basket you can see the icon up here is displaying how many items are in our basket and if we click on the basket then we can see all the items that we've added to the basket and we can remove them and uh, the car total is um, updated every time we add or take something out so if we add in the apple watch say here you can see it um, adding up the new total um, so we just close that now and guys if you haven't subscribed to my channel would you please consider liking and subscribing to my channel it helps out my channel a lot and it keeps me vo motivated uh, to keep creating these videos thanks very much okay so we'll get started with today's project then so just going to create a file uh, your folder that you want um, open VS code then we'll open that folder that we've just created Okay, so open up your terminal in VS Code then, click terminal on the top and click new terminal. And then down inside our terminal, npx create React app. So we just type in npx create react app then do a space and do a dot and what this does is just going to name it the same as the folder name so our project will be called shopping cart react uh, shopping cart context api we're not giving it a specific name okay so press enter then uh, this will take a few minutes to install so i'm just going to pause the video here and come back when it's finished creating the react app okay so now react is finished initializing the project so down on the next command line then we're just going to start up our app so we'll do npm start Okay, so now you can see our React project is running on localhost 3000. So inside in our source folder, we're just going to get rid of any files we don't need at the minute. So I want to get rid of the logo file. Uh, React is going to throw some errors now for a minute while we're deleting these. Uh, we're going to get rid of the app test. Setup test. app.css uh, inside in our index.css we're just going to delete everything in here and then in our app I'm going to get rid of the two top imports and we're going to get rid of everything inside the main div if we delete that and save that now now we refresh our page now we can just see our, our shopping cart that we've displayed here 
so we're ready to start working on, on our project now so for most of the CSS I'm just going to copy and paste it from my git repository I leave a link in the description uh, if you want to follow along you can just copy and paste it from the git repository there's quite a bit of CSS in some of it and I don't want to delay the, the video make the video any longer than what it should be so inside in our index.js or index.css sorry I'm just going to paste in some CSS to start us off and what I'm, what I'm just doing is in here is bringing in a Google font um, setting some uh, padding and margin um, the font families and the h1s and the paragraphs and then just styling the, the scroll bar a little bit that's all we're doing in here so let's save that file now and close that now we won't be needing this file any longer okay um so we're going to inside in our source folder as well we want to create a file called data.js and this is just a json object that i've created with just some products in here so i'm just going to copy and paste this from the git repository as well which i'll have a link in the description to so i'll save that file then so we have six uh, products in here and i just have a name and an image coming from um, a website called on splash just an image for each and the price so i'm just going to toggle the view here now view toggle wrap okay so these are going to be our six products starting out with so just close that file now index.js and close that file so inside in our source folder again we're going to create um, another folder called screens okay inside this folder then we're going to create two files first one is going to be home screen.js and then we have a home screen.css okay so and we'll create another and for the home screen css i'm just going to copy and paste it in as well so we're just um, displaying flex and display flex wrap we're giving it a max width and then a width margin and the gap for all the products inside that's all that's doing close that file okay so inside in our home screen.js then we're going to import the products from the data file the data.js file so first we're going to import them import we call them products uh, we'll create our our function first and i'm using uh, an extension called what's the name of this uh, es7 react redux uh, graphql react native snippets and i'll show you what this does it's a shortcut for starting out uh, react f functional components so you can just install that or you can type them all out either entirely up to yourself so if i say underscore r a f c e now you see that the, it inserts the functional component first okay so we'll in up at the very top then just create a bit of space for ourselves and we'll import <coughs> products um, we're going to import that from one folder up so that dot double dot flower slash data and we'll import our CSS okay 
Okay, so we're going to display out all our products first. So we'll open up some curly braces to put in some JavaScript and we'll say products.map, which is going to map through all our products in our data.js file. So we'll use the map function and we're just going to call each um, single product a product. So for each product and some round brackets, um, first we're just going to, just to make sure it's working, we'll display the product dot name. And I just, how I'm doing that is if we open the data.js file inside products, I'm just taking the name. So close that. Now we need to bring it into our app.js file first. So we just save that file inside in our app.js then. I'm going to imp uh, instead of the shopping cart here, we can just say uh, home screen and react is after finding the home screen for me. So if I click on that space, now it's after importing it automatically for me, but if it's not after importing it automatically for you, just uh, on the very first line, import home screen from that slash screens home screen. So if we save that now, now you can see the list of all our names of each of our projects so we know the map function is working correctly so so the next step we're going to do inside in our source folder now we're just going to create a components folder and inside our components folder then we're going to be creating um, a product card and this is where we want to display all our products in each each product is going to have its own card so we'll create a file here product card dot js okay and we'll also need a product card at css So I'm just going to copy and paste in the CSS again. And we just have some media screens to set the width on different size screens and CSS is straightforward enough. Um, if you're looking to know how to do the React Context API and I take it that you know CSS already, so I'm not going to dwell too much on the CSS. You can see there's just adding some CSS for buttons and things like that and hover effects. Okay, so save that CSS file in our product card then. And eventually then, what we're going to be doing with the product card is in our home screen, instead of displaying the, the product name sorry the product name we're going to be displaying this product card so we we'll go close our product card css and go into our product card js so i'm going to create another functional component okay see inside in our, our product card in the main div then we're going to give this uh, class name of product card wrapper Two underscores. Then we'll create another div. And inside here we're going to have an image. We're going to give the image a class name, product card image. Give this a class name, a product card image. And for the 
source then we're going to be passing in the products from our home screen so we need to go back to our home screen for one second and pass that through so inside in our home screen we want to import that product card that we're just creating inside in our components folder product card so here instead of product.name put in two round brackets and the product card I'm going to give it a key I just toggle the view on this now toggle, toggle word wrap so the key is going to be a product.id. Then we're going to pass in the product as itself. So the product is going to be equal to product. And we just close that component then. Just close this here. Now, so save that now. Go back into our product card. And the source then is going to be open curly brackets product uh, up inside our first set of brackets. We need to destructure our products that we're bringing in. P R O D. So we have a product, and down in here then then. We, we're going to display the product dash image. Now, if we save that then, now we can see our six images are coming from the data object. So we're just going to quickly fix it up now. So that's our image brought in. After the image, we're going to have a H4. And the H4 is going to be product.name. After the H4, then we're going to have another div. We're going to give this a class name of product card price underscore product card underscore underscore price. Inside here, we're going to have a H5, and it's going to be product that price. So if we save that now, now you can see that we're getting our product name and our price. So now uh, we'll just quickly go back to our home screen and in, we give this a class as well. And we're going to give this a class of products underscore wrapper. So we save that now. And then we're going to apply our product card CSS styling so inside product card that js we're going to import dot slash product now and we save that on our product card CSS styling has been applied. So we have the nice border around each of the images. We have the name and we have the price of each item. Okay. So to display the number as a currency, we're going to import package, an old package. So down in our terminal, then just 
if you press this little plus button here, it opens up a new terminal and we say in PM I for install format currency. Press return. We just wait a second for that to install. Okay, so now inside in our package.json, we have it. You should see it here. Format currency is installed. So we go back to our products card. I'm going to import that. So we'll say I am import format. So import format currency from format currency. So down where we're displaying the price, just going to delete this for a second inside in our H5. So we want to display, we open up our curly brackets again. I'm going to say format currency. And then we just use the back ticks. And inside here, we're going to use the dollar sign and some more curly brackets and we'll say product dot price. After that, uh, we'll, we have to put in some options. So up on the, just above the return, we'll say let options. Um, so we'll set this to format. All this is in the documentation for this um, uh, package. You can just go to the NPM website and, and look at it all. So we're going to set, uh, it's going to be percent S percent V. And then we're going to set the symbol And we're going, I'm going to set the symbol to a euro sign. You can set it to your currency if you wish. So if we save that now. Sorry, I have a typo. That should be a percent. Now you can see currencies all have the symbol in front of them. Now we're going to create a little icon then for displaying the ratings. So if we look at our finished project, we can see all the stars here and the reviews of 12. Okay. Um, well, actually we'll add in our button first. So just below the product price, we'll add in a button. Uh, we'll give it a class name. It's going to be equal to product card underscore underscore button. And we'll just, in here, we'll have add to basket. Now we have our button. Okay. <coughs> so we're going to use Font Awesome for the little stars. So all these little stars are going to be created by Font Awesome. So if we go and go to Go to, in your browser and go to cdnjs.com and in the search option type in font awesome now on the main version then we are going to just copy that tag so inside in our public folder then we'll go into our index.html and just above the title then paste in that link save that close our index.html file then so inside in our components folder again we're going to create another file called rating.js we're going to call another component So 
So inside here, we're going to create another uh, functional component. Now we're going to install another um, package as well here after spelling right and wrong. So I'm just going to change the file name as well. Okay, so we're going to install another package um, called UUID and this creates a unique ID for us. So down in our terminal again, we'll say npm i UUID. Just give that a second to install again. Okay, so in our package.json, we have UUID now installed. And this is just going to create a unique key for each star that's going to be displayed. It's going to give it a unique ID. So inside in our products card, we'll get ready for this first. So inside our products card, just above the button that we've created a second ago, we're going to create a div. And we're going to give this a class name of product card underscore underscore rating. Actually, this should be a capital P up on line 11 for the product card price. Okay, so inside the div for the product card rating, we want to, uh, we'll be using that component we're creating for the rating. So React is after finding that for me already. So it's after automatically importing it for me. So if you if you need to import it yourself, if React didn't import it for you, you need to type in this line on line three. So we'll save that now. So we go in our ratings. Then we're going to pass in some things. We're going to pass in a value. And the value is going to be equal to the product dot rating. Then we're going to pass in some text. And the text is going to be equal to, just going to open some back ticks so we can use, concatenate some string with our, our JavaScript. So we use the dollar sign and curly brackets to do that. And we're going to say product uh, dot num reviews. And then just after that, we'll do a space and we'll type reviews. So we we'll save that. And I'll just show you in the data JS as well. Here's our ratings that were taken and here's our num reviews. So we'll go back into our ratings.js file. So we're going to destructure the values we're passing in. So we'll use curly brackets and we're going to take the value. We're going to take the text. And we're going to have a color. Now we didn't pass in the color yet, so we're going to set a default value for that. So to set a default value, go down to below our component and we'll say rating. Uh, dot default props. And uh, we'll set color is going to be a four one C. Okay, so if we don't pass in any of these values, we can set a default prop. So for we're passing in a value and we're passing in a text prop and for the color one, React can't see a color, so we have a default prop down here. So if you had to pass in a color, the rating that default props would be overwritten with the prop that was passed in. But as we're not passing in a color prop, we're going to be using this color here. Okay, so for our class name, then for main div, it's going to be rating. 
and inside here we're going to use some javascript so we'll open our curly brackets we're just going to set an, uh, an array for five objects all oh, numbers one two three four five because we have five stars and we're going to map this array We're just going to give it we're just saying it going to say rate in there and for each of the one each of the items in the array we're going to return a span and the key is going to be equal to the UUID so we need to print in UUID and the way you import UUID is you open uh, curly brackets and you say v4 as uuid v4 and that's going to be from uh, uuid so the key is going to be equal to uh, uuid v4 but that's going to create a new uh, unique id for each of the stars so inside the span then uh, we're going to have a, an eye tag and this is going to be the font awesome and the style is going to be equal to the color i'm going to give it a class name just close off our eye tag there so the class name then is going to be based on what the rating is so we're going to check if it's um if it's a half star first so we're going to say the value that's passed in plus one if that's equal to rate plus 0 0.5 uh, then then we're going to have a class name of f a s f a slash star alt and then we're going to check if the value so if the value is greater than or equal to the rating we're going to put in a full star so the class name for this instance is going to be fas slash fa slash star otherwise then it's going to be an empty star so it's going to if r f a slash star so if we save that now now you can see all the ratings is coming true for us so if we open up our data dot js now you can see for the first product we have a rating of 4.5 so we have four stars fully lit up and we have a half star and for id2 we have a rating of four so on id3 has a rating of three so just to go through that again we're mapping through an array of five and we're for each one we're returning we're checking the value that's passed in so the first one would have been 4.5 so we're checking if the value plus one is equal to rate plus 0.5 we're going to give it a half star so the value that was passed in for this one was 4.5 so 4.5 plus 1 is 5.5 and then we're on the fifth star which would be rate of 5 so 5 plus 0.5 is 5 5.5 so then we get a half star on the fifth star and then all the rest are just checking if the value is greater than or equal to rate we're going to put in a full star and if it's not we're going to put in an empty star okay so then after that then we're going to put in a span and inside the span then we're going to return the text that was passed in or sorry if there was a text we're going to return the text 
So the double ampersand text is if if a text passed in has text, we're going to display the text. So we save that now. Now you see we get the number of reviews, eight reviews, 12 reviews, 12, 10, so on and so forth. So that's our card done and we have our rating done. We have the button. Okay, so next we'll create our nav bar. So inside in our components folder again, we'll create two new files, uh, a nav.js and we create another file nav.css so in the nav css i'm just going to copy and paste our css and it's like again it's straightforward enough the css so we're just hitting in the nav we're displaying just the color is going to be white we're displaying flex and then we're centering our items, we're setting a height and a background color, and we're setting the position to fixed, so it's going to be always on the top. So fixed of top zero, left zero, right zero, so it's going to take up the full width of the screen. And then the, for the left section of the nav, we're giving it a display flex of one, and the middle is one, and then just the input wrapper, I just have a search thing in there and then the right section we're giving it a display flex of one so each section is going to take up the same uh, portion inside in the, the nav and then our item count that's the little red icon that displays how many items are inside the cart so it's just setting the color and we're giving it a zx z index of 10 so it's always going to be on the top of the card icon and we're just setting it to a circle with border radius 50 percent then just setting the the height and the width and we're setting the top and the right then as well so we'll close the nav.css we'll close some of all these other files too we don't need these yet okay so for our nav.js then uh, we'll create another functional component and we're just going to have a nav element and inside the nav element we'll have a div and we set a class name is going to be equal to nav lift and we'll give a text of store and we'll have another div here then I'll give this a class name of nav middle. So inside here we'll have a div and the class name is going to be input wrapper. Inside here then we'll have an input. Type will be text. We don't need the name and the ID. Get rid of them. Then we'll have an i tag and the class name is going to be a search icon. So the font awesome icon for that is F A S F A Search. So after the middle section then we're going to have our, our right section. So we have another div. The class name is going to be equal to nav right. And inside here we'll have another div. Class name is going to be equal to cart icon. I tag in here and we'll have a class name it's going to be equal to if a if a shopping cart
Now we've saved that. And we'll go back to our app.js and we'll import the nav. So above our home screen. NAV. So React is after automatically importing that. So now you can see our nav is displayed. And inside in our nav, we need to import our nav.css. Okay, so now we have our nav bar and we have all our cart items inside here. The color is not working. Okay, have I a typo for the color inside rating? I've just refreshed the page and the color is working now. Okay, so uh, now our color is working. So we'll start working on our our context now and our state management. Okay, so inside in our source folder, then we'll create another folder for context. So source, create a folder called context. So inside in our context folder, then we're going to set a uh, Another folder, we're going to have a cart contents, context. Another folder, cart. So inside the cart, then we're going to put a, we'll set a types file, types.js. And inside, sorry, we're going to move the types into the context folder. So now we have the types inside our context folder and inside our cart, then we're going to create three more files. So we'll have a cart context.js. Create another file for cart reducer.js. And then we're going to have a cart state.js. So okay, so for our cart context here, we're just going to set up our state, our context. So we're going to import. Um, open our curly braces. We're going to import create context from React. And then we're just going to declare a cart context. So we'll say const cart context. And that's going to be equal to create context. And then we're going to export that so we can use it. save that then we're just going to set up our types so inside inside in our types.js file i'm just going to copy and paste these in as well so we want to have three types we're going to have a show hide cart add to cart remove cart and they're going to be equal to the same so inside in our types.js you, um, you can just pause the video and type in these so i'm going to save the types I'm going to close the types.js. I'm going to close the cart context. Uh, I'm going to close some of these. We don't need them for the minute. So now we're going to start on our cart state. So, so we're just going to import a few things to get started. So we're going to import uh, and we're going to import user juicer from React. And 
and we're going to import our um, cart context as well. So we're going to say import ca cart. And that's going to be imported from cart context. And we're going to import our cart reducer as well. And we're going to import our, our types. So from types, we're going to import show hide cart, and we're going to import add to cart and remove item. So we'll, so then we say const cart state it's going to be and we're going to use the children prop because we'll be passing all this state down to our children and then Then we'll export default. Cart state. Uh, so in our return, then we want to use the cart context dot provider. So we'll say cart context dot provider. Okay, so I'm going to set some initial state first. So above the return, to say going to say const uh, initial state. And we're going to have a state for show cart, and the initial state is going to be false, and then the cart items. Uh, is going to be an array. Down inside in our value then, this is where our state will be, so we'll say show cart. And the show cart is going to be the state that show cart. And the cart items then it's going to be the state state dot cart items. Okay, so we're going to set our, our use reducer now. So we're going to say const, and this is something like the use state hook. So our use reducer hook will is going to take a state and then it's going to have a dispatch and then that's going to be equal to use reducer and we're going to use our cart reducer and then we're going to pass in the initial state. Okay, so we're going to have two functions also. So we're going to set up these functions now. So we're going to say const add to cart. And that's going to take in an, an, an item that's being passed to the cart. And once we call this function, then we want to dispatch to a reducer. So we're going to say dispatch. And we're going to pass in the type 
of uh, add add to cart and then the payload we're going to pass in we're going to pass in the item okay so then we want to add the function down into our cart context provider so we just say add to cart uh, we'll have another function for the show and the hide cart so we'll say const show we'll set an arrow function for this And then we just want to dispatch and uh, type that we'll be dispatching uh, so we're just going to say show hide cart we're not passing any payload for that we're just going to be setting the, the boolean to true or false and so we want to remove an item as well so we're going to have a function for that so we'll say const remove and that's going to take in an id that we'll be passing in and but then we'll go once this function is called we will be dispatching uh, a type of remove item and then the payload is going to be the item ID okay so we need to add the show height cart as well and we need to add in the remove item so that should be it for our cart state then we have our initial state with a show cart of false and a cart item as an empty array starting out um, then we have a function and add our items to cart uh, show hide cart and remove item okay so to use just our cart reducer then so we're just going to import our types again so we'll have our show hide cart and we have our add to cart and we have our other type of remove item so we'll set up our, um, our reducer then so we say const cart reducer and that's going to be equal to then we just export our reducer so inside in our cart reducer we're going to have the state and then we're going to have an action the reducer is listening for an action and that's going to be the type that's passed in so we use a switch then and on the switch we're going to see the action dot type so the action dot type is coming from in the cart stage you see when we're dispatching dispatching we're passing in a type 
So when the action is listening, there's going to be a, a type attached to it. So on this, so the we're just going to set a default first, a default for the switch, and the default we're just going to return the state. Okay, so first we're going to check, uh, we're going to say case, it's show hide cart. So if that's what it finds, uh, then we're going to return the state. Sorry, we need to put this in a return first. And we'll move this into our return. And then we're going to uh, the show cart. So the show cart of our state, we're going to set it to whatever it's not. So we use the exclamation mark and we use state dot show cart. So what it's doing here is when we dispatch the action type show hide cart, uh, we're going to return the state. And then for the show height cart, um, if it was set to false, it's going to set it to true, and vice versa, if it's true, it's going to set it to false. So then we're going to check uh, ca case if the action that type was add to cart. Then we're going to return. We're going to return the state again. And we're going to add to our cart items array. So we'll say cart items. And that's an array. So we're going to take everything that's in the cart. So we So we say state dot cart items, and then we want to append to that then the action dot payload. So what we're doing here is, when the action type load that gets passed through is add to cart, we're going to return all of our state. And then we're just going to change the cart items part of the state. And we're going to take what this piece of code here is doing is taking everything that's in the cart item state. And then we're adding to that the action that payload. So the new piece, the new item is going to be added to the end of the cart items. So um, we have one more then when we want to remove an item. So we we'll say case remove item uh, we want to return and we're going to return all the state again and then this time we're going to remove the cart item so our cart items piece of state again so in our cart items we want to go to our cart item state so we say state dot cart items and then we're going to filter them uh, we're going to use the filter function and for each item then uh, for each item if the item dot id is not equal to the action dot payload So what we're doing here is we're returning the state. Sorry, close that. Okay, so what we're doing here, if the remove item is passed in, if we're dispatching remove item, we're returning the state, and then our cart items, we're going to filter all of the cart items, and any of them that's not equal to the ID 
that was passed in we were going to return them okay so now we have our cart reducer and we'll save that now and to use the context then in our app we need to go to our index.js um, we're going to import our cart state import that from that slash context cart and then our cart state and then we're just going to wrap our app in the cart context or our cart state sorry and we'll move our app up into our cart state now so now our all our app has access to our cart state so we can close that now we can close our cart state close our cart reducer and then back in our cart state inside in our context our cart context dot provider we're going to use the children prop so if we scroll down and inside here we're going to tell it pass it to the children so we save that now there's a good chrome extension called react dev tools i have it installed here um, i'll just show it to you first um, we'll go to a new page. So in the Chrome um, web store, if you want to just install this React Dev Tools, and it, it, it is very useful for checking state um, when you're using the Context API. It shows you everything that's in it. So if we go back to the one that we're working on, all you need to do, I'll just make this bigger for a second. So you just right click Inspect, and then scroll all the way down. You should see a Components, click on Components, and then on the context provider, now you can see the children, app, and the value. Here's all our state. We have a function add to cart, cart items, remove items. The show cart is false, and the show hide cart function. So we'll just close that for a second. So we can start using our state now inside all our components. So now we're going to go back to our components. And we're going to go to our product card. And we're going to start using our station here. So to do that, we're going to import uh, card context. Uh, we're going to import that from dot dot slash context slash cart slash cart context and then inside just above the let options I'm going to use that so we're going to say const uh, I'm going to destructure our context we're going to take the add to cart function out of it so if we say add to cart and we're going to say use context and the context we're going to use is the cart context and we need to import use context from react as well so import use context
from React. Okay, so we're going to put this function on the button. So if we scroll down to the button, on the session now and click here. Um, the on click is going to be I'm going to call that function directly. So we're going to put round brackets. Uh, add at the cart and we're passing in the product so now if we save that okay so we just make this bigger now and make sure it is working so just make that screen bigger i'm going to open up the inspect tools i'm going to go to the components and we're going to look at our station we have our cart items there is empty at the minute there's just an empty array so if we click on the add to basket cart items we have an error so quickly go back in here cart items go to our cart state what have i done wrong here oh there should be an s cart items Cart items, state dot cart items, just check a reducer. Add the cart, cart items. Okay, that should be all good now. Save all. If we go back to our app, just refresh that now. So our cart items is empty. If we press add to cart now, now you can see, if I expand that now, you can see our Sony camera was added to our state. And if we add the basket on the headphones, now we have another item inside in our array. Okay, so that's working for us now. i just close that. So we have the functionality now to add an, an item to the cart. Okay, so inside in our nav then we can use our context as well. So we go to our nav.js. Just going to close some of these here now. Inside in our nav.js, um, down here for the shopping cart, we want the icon to appear when there's something inside in our cart. So. So to get that little icon passing up, we're going to say if, oh wait, no. We're going to import our cart context first. Context, and then it's going to be from the cart folder and cart context then just above the return we're going to use that so we're going to say const and uh, we're going to use the cart items it's going to be equal to use context we need to import this as well and we're going to use the cart context so we'll say import use context from react okay so down here we're going to open up some curly braces and we're going to check if the cart items is greater than zero uh, so if they are we're going to have a div and we'll give this a class name of items count item
And inside here we'll have a span. And inside the span we'll put the cart items lint. Save that now. Okay, so we'll we'll check it out now if we add something to the basket. Okay, it didn't display. Oh, sorry. So we're here when we're checking, we need to check the cart items that lint if that is greater than zero. Now, now you can see it's displaying the little two. So if we add something else, it goes to three, four, and our nav bar is staying at the top. So we'll get working on displaying the cart. Now, the cart is not displaying for us. We haven't got a cart set up yet. So inside in our components folder again, we're going to create cart.js. And then we're going to have a cart.css. So I'm just going to copy and paste in the cart.css again. So the CSS is straightforward enough and when I hover we're just going to have a rotation on the close button. That's all we're really doing in here. So I'm going to close that and for our cart. So we'll be using our context in here again. So we're just going to import that to use context first. Going to import our CSS. Then we're going to import our cart context. Text. We're also going to use the format currency package we installed earlier, so we're going to use that. So I'll say const cart set this to a an arrow function, then we'll export it at the end. Okay, so I hope our variable here for our context. And inside here, we're going to, we'll want the, the show cart state. We'll want the cart items. And we'll want the show hide cart. to have our use context hook 
And then we're going to use the cart context. Okay, so then we're going to set our options again, like we did for our format currency. So it's going to be an object and inside object, we're going to have format. Percent S percent V and then the symbol Okay. So then inside here, inside in our return, we're going to open up some curly braces and we're going to say so the show cart. So the show cart originally is a boolean equal is either true or false. So we're going to say show cart. And by saying show cart on its own, it's going to check if show cart is true. So if show cart is true, then we want to return a div. I'm going to give it a class name of cart wrapper. And we want to have another div inside here. I'm just going to play some um, inline style in here also. So style is going to be equal to uh, text line going to set the text align to right. And then we're going to have an eye tag. Going to set some in line style in here also. And we're going to set a cursor pointer. We give it a class name then. And we'll say if a if a slash times slash circle. And we'll have a function here and say on click. So that's going to be on click is going to be show hide cart. So then for the cart itself. Okay, so then we'll have a, um, a div. Class name here will be equal to cart inner wrapper. So we're going to check the cart items and we're going to check the length. And if the length is, e is equal to zero, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to have a H for And in the H4, we'll just say the cart is empty. So if the cart is not empty, then we're going to display an unordered list. And in the unordered list, then we're going to map through the cart items. See how useful the context API is for passing state now. So we're going to say for each item. Uh, for each item then we're going to return another 
component. Now we're going to call the component cart item. We'll be creating this now in just one moment. I want to give this a key then, and that's going to be the the key then will be the cart ID or the item the ID. Item dot underscore ID and then the item will pass through an item as a prop as well and the, the item will be the item. So then for the end, the car total, we'll have another div, um, we'll have class name, the class name is going to be equal to cart and then cart total. Inside here we'll have another div and we'll display some text and we'll have one more div then and we'll set some inline styling for this and we'll say margin margin left we'll set the margin left to five and inside here we're going to use our format text or format currency sorry and inside here we're going to get the total of all the cart items so we're going to we're going to use the reduce function here so we say cart items dot reduce So inside here for the reduce function, we're going to use the amount first and then for each item, then we're just going to simply do the item dot price plus the amount. And what the amount is, is the previous um, amount that the reducer function is after adding up to this stage so it'll be if it was three items the amount would have been item one plus item two and then we're at for the third item then we're just adding the item price to the, to the previous amount and we want to tell it to start at zero and then for our format currency then we're going to pass in our options and have I set options above? I have. Okay. So let's save that now. And then we want to bring it into our app.js. So inside in our app.js, where is our app.js? App.js. In between the nav and the home screen. I'm just going to import the cart. Actually, I won't import it yet because I have to create the cart items first. So inside in our components, I'm going to create another file called cart item. I'm going to create another file cart item. dot css so for the cart item css as well i'm just going to copy and paste it from the repo and then inside in our cart item just going to create another function then and we're going to be importing some states in here too and the state we're passing through then is going to be the item we're passing in the item from our our cart 
And now we're going to import our context and use context. Going to import our CSS. And we're going to import the cart context also. So our context folder and our cart and our cart context. So what context we'll be using in here uh, we'll be going to be using our the remove item I use context and that's going to be our cart context Okay, and we're going to be using our format currency as well, so we're going to import that. Just going to set our options as well for our format currency. So what we're we returning inside in this component, we're going to re return a list object, a list item. We're going to give this class name is equal to cart item item. We're returning the image. And the source is going to be equal to the item dot image. And after that, we have a div. I'm going to return the item name. And we're going to have the format currency. We'll use some backticks here again. And uh, so dollar sign curly braces it and the item dot price. And add in our options. Okay. And then we're going to have a button to remove the item. So we we'll have class name equals cart cart underscore underscore button, and we'll have an on click on this button. And that's going to be equal to call the function directly. So we'll open with round brackets and we're going to remove the item and 
we're passing in the item dot id okay so now we'll go back into our app.js and we're going to import the cart cart item is not defined oh we need to import the cart item into cart so we we'll go to cart and after cart item you press control and space bar it should import it for you okay so uh, it is cart item from cart item so we we'll save that now okay so we we'll just refresh this if we press the cart we haven't an on click in our nav for this so we we'll go to our nav.js and okay so on our i tag we're going to push an on click event and we need to import it from the cart context so we're going to say show show hide cart so down here on the icon we're going to have an on click and that's going to be equal to show hide cart save that now now if we click on our icon we get our cart the cart total undefined equals so we're after forgetting something here so in our cart total let's see what I'm after forgetting here inside our cart so where have I the error that looks okay there oh open our options that should be a small s so if we save that now now we have the cart total so if we add something to our basket we have the cart item photo or in our button we forgot to add the text so in our cart item in our on click we'll have we'll put in some text here r e m o v e now we have the remove so just expand that now so now we have the sony camera 89 uh, we put in the headphones we see the total iphone and our car total is getting updated the whole time for each item so we removed them everything got deleted from the cart which shouldn't happen Okay, let's go into VS Code and have a quick look and see what's going on. Uh, go into our cart item, remove item, on click remove item dot id. Okay, so this should be an underscore id. Save that, and I probably done the same in the cart reducer so remove item yeah that should be an underscore here too so we save that now let's have a look and see how it's looking okay so now if we add a few items to our cart we open the cart and we remove now it is removing each of them and then our cart is empty there's an issue here our little close button is missing so let's go back to vs code and see what's wrong here in our cart js on click show hide cart um, this should be times so down on line 18 type in times let's go back to our app refresh the page so if we add some items to our basket now we see we have two items we open up the cart now we have 
the little close icon we have the total we can remove we can add items we click on the close icon it's closed thanks very much for watching if you like the content i'm producing please like and subscribe to my channel it keeps me motivated to keep creating content for the for this channel thanks very much for watching the video and we'll see you in the next video